Hello, Sarah. Upstairs, Sarah. Yeah. I'll have done that chandelier. I'll be up later to have a look. Hope you haven't started. cracked anything. No, I don't be careful. So I should go. You know what Mr. Hudson's like about got... breakages? <laughs> Last time I was away for the summer, my underhouse was broken. You're going to win this one. Venetian glass. Oh. Wedding present. It was Mr. Hudson what stopped Katie's wages, not Lady Marjorie. Mr. Hudson's very queer about breakages. Mm. So I hope he was careful, my girl. I oh, know well, Mr. Becker couldn't give a hoot, could he? <laughs> he oh, does most of the breaking himself. I dare him, Porty. Oh, <laughs> he can't leave it alone. You know what some butlers are. Lady Marjorie wouldn't stand for it, would she, Rose? Well, be that as it may, we're quite happy. Glass of gin, Sarah. Eh? Hey? It's all right. Oh. Enid brought it with us. Oh. Here, don't I ever miss it? Captain Graham's too busy turning the blind eye. To everything, mostly. Particularly to Mrs. Graham. Oh, Mr. Bellum is ever so scrupulous. You don't miss a thing. Oh, what's a pity. You're not very fashionable, you people. Oh, yes, but Lady Marjorie is hardly Mrs. Graham, is she? I mean, Lady Marjorie don't need to be fashionable. Maybe not, Rose. But then it wasn't Mrs. Graham got made the laughing stock of London, was it? Meaning exactly? You know, my dear Rose, our friend the society painter made a right monkey out of your Lady Marjorie. <laughs> oh, it would take a great deal more than something so trivial to upset Lady Marjorie. <laughs> this is a respectable household. How dreadfully dull for you, my poor dears. <laughs> oh, we forgot, Enid. This is the household that keeps their old bones and sends the bottles back. <laughs> the rag and bone man don't call here, Henry. Well, what do you do, Enid? What do we do? How do you think I'll come by this? Where's your glass? Let not thy sins nor thy evil doings be made known to the children of God in their innocence. Mm -hmm. All right, Alfred. No, nothing like that goes on in this household, thank you very much. I say to you, put thine own house in order. Our Mrs. Bridges isn't above losing the odd bit of lard or a chicken now and then, is she, Sarah? That would be quite enough, thank you, Alfred. Well, go on. Sunny days. Uh, All right. I'll drop a gin in it. My Of course, box. this is a My respectable box. household, Henry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They've got appearances to keep up. Although um, we did hear that Lady Marjorie's appearance at a certain ball wasn't all that it should have been. What, what are you talking about? Apsley House. We heard that dress had been seen before. Never. It was a new she dress. She never wears a ball gown twice. It was a new dress. I saw it arrive from Paris. That's right, Paris. In France. Paquin? <coughs> Mrs. Grahams came from Paquin. Oh, where's that? Still losing. Where's that? Yeah. That's a French designer. That's where that is. You know Rose Becker. Oh, yes. It all comes back to me now. Where's that? It was a beautiful dress and it had a lovely train. Well, it wasn't so long as Mrs. Graham's. Now, that was a train. It was ever so long. We all saw it. It was the most beautiful dress, wasn't it, Emily? Oh, I've never seen a dress like it. <laughs> well, I don't suppose you saw a pair of shoes till you came over here. Oh, or a pair of blue ones. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Graham's <laughs> train was so long. As she came down the stairs, it just covered all the stairs, didn't it, Henry? Yeah, it was really long. Oh, yes? Well, Lady Marjorie, as she stood in the hall, Roberts, her personal maid, was still picking it up in the boudoir. Oh, yes, I'm <laughs> sure. I can show it to you if you don't believe me. If your eyes big enough to take it in. Lead on. Well, then. All right. <laughs> Come on, Emily. Come on. I've seen a good one. Well, <laughs> oh, she wants to stay here and tell her beads. Oh, come on. I shall lead the way. Hey, where's the lavatory? Oh, he's in the area. Oh, well, I've been drinking, haven't I? Beer brings you on the man. Don't you know that? I can't have a in the boudoir, can I? Hey, out here. Standing around for it's not going to bite us. Empty houses. <laughs> yes, but it's not going to bite. Our hall's twice the size of this mm. one. I thought it might be. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Would you follow me, please? <laughs> hey, didn't we meet at one of Mrs. Keppel's bridge evenings? Certainly didn't you know. I was the one getting pickled in the smoking room. <laughs> oh, what a grand slam I had that night. Oh, that's what his majesty's calling it, these. <laughs> <laughs> Don't us stand there, girl. Go downstairs and tell Hudson to bring up the champagne. Oh, I hope you're oh, serving the veuve clicot. It's all the rage. Well, use it for shedding water, didn't you know? Is that fun? <laughs> Blimey. What are we going to do? Quick. What? I don't know, but quick. Well, they can't hear through walls, you know. Everybody get below oh, stairs. Hurry up. We're the two girls. Come on, and Alfred, the door, and get rid of that junk. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, Police Constable Hobbs, sir. Blimey, it's the law. Oh, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Now then. What can I do for you, Constable? Well, I've had certain funny reports of servants doing what they should not ought to have been doing. Oh, not here, Constable, surely. Oh, well, I'm afraid so, sir. Uh, servants have been seen. Well, they should not all to him. Uh, perhaps you'd better come inside, Constable, and we can discuss the matter further. Oh, I thought it was a about this famous gander, Rose? Or have you had second thoughts? Of course I haven't. Come on. Were you really scared? Did you oh, really think it was the law? No, it takes more than that to scare me, doesn't it? Aye, but it's early days, isn't it, Henry? Oh, well, that's right, Alfred. Who knows what we might get up to? I mean, we could get up to all sorts of things. Come here, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you mind your own business, Miss Iron Buddy, oh, mind. Off you go, play a little girl game. But that's what parties are for, anyway. We gentlemen have more important matters to attend to, isn't that right, Your Grace? Oh, well, absolutely, my dear chap. That'll be all, thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Game of cricket, my lad. Oh, cricket. Alfred, watch it. Remember what happened last time? Well, what did happen last time? Nothing, but just be careful, that's all. <laughs> what happened? What did you do? One wicket. Over it. <laughs> Over it. Hey, look, where's the ball? Over there. Oh, in the gloves. Right, we have it. One ball, one bat. And I'll have middle and leg, I think. Middle and up, middle and up. His ah. grace always has middle and up. Oh, well, I don't know about his grace. Right. Oh, the blinds are drawn. Don't want them opposite spying on us. Of course it's drawn. I like the lights. Right. I think I'll lock the door. Oh, honest, the way you two are carrying on. Who do you think's gonna come in here? Mr. Hudson, all the way from the Isle of Blooming Light to find out if you're missing him. I'll oh, see that in it if you oh, don't mind. Oh, yes. No, that's, that's not, bad. not bad. That No, it's not bad at all. Lady Marjorie has exquisite taste. Mm. Exquisite taste? What do you know about it? You never get to wear dresses like this, Miguel. If you wish hard enough. Do you know that colour really suits you, Sarah? Oh, thank you, Rose. I shall have lots of dresses in this colour mm. and this material. I'm still waiting for this famous dress. Give us hand, Sarah. Right, mind. Yeah, I know. Okay. There. Take the train. Oh, it's lovely. All that hand stitched velvet. Right. There. There you are, Enid. No. No, I don't think much of that. No, it's not a patch. Not I'm... a patch. Now, Mrs. Grahams really was something. Yes, I can well imagine. But you see, Enid, what you don't understand is the beauty of a ball gown lies in the subtlety of its cutting. Isn't that so, Sarah? Yes, that's right, Rose. It is in the subtlety of the cutting. Oh, yes. You see, Enid, a dress like this has to be seen on to be appreciated. It's the you? only way to judge. Well, put it on, then. Are you mad? I've heard it fits where it touches. Yeah, well, it wouldn't fit me, would it? <laughs> anyway, I couldn't do it justice, not with my hair like this. No, well, it'll be nice to tell the others I've uh, seen it and everything. All right, here you are. <laughs> Come on, Amy, help Good me. Good girl, Sarah. <laughs> All right, I'll oh, get the proper underclothes. Oh, do you think we should, Rose? Are you all right? Yeah, in for a penny. 
down it, of course. Yes. Now get your clothes off. I'm not going to do you. Here, you take that. Right. When I was little, we used to go and see my uncle in the country. And he had this great big box full of old clothes and everything. It was lovely. Well, that's pretty. I like that. Yes. Undress me. <laughs> With pleasure, so lady. And it's gone for sick right into the pavilion. And that is a century for Ranjit Sinji. Oh, Randy! Ah, and England did Claire for 542 for nine wickets. Mm -hmm. Beat that. Gin in the wall. Gin in the wall? Back to the pavilion. Where's the pavilion? Where the gin is. <laughs> After you, Dr. Grace. to drop the hard stuff, is it? <laughs> well, that's not for little girls. Especially not little paddies. Dad, it was only a drop left. Oh, uh, well. Go on. Give it to her, Randy. Put a bit of a spark into her. <laughs> I've never touched it before. <laughs> Doesn't it make you feel all funny? Oh, that's right. And a little bit daring, eh? What's going on upstairs? Well, me and Alfred here is having a game of cricket in the front hall. Do you want to come up and play with us? Oh, I'm not allowed in the front hall. Oh, well, then we'll have to play down here, won't we? Oh, what sort of game? Uh, guess your weight. You know, like they play in the fairgrounds. How much do you weigh, eh? Not much. I'm very frail. <laughs> Soon see. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh you're hurting. Oh. Alfred, <laughs> you <laughs> <down>. <laughs> oh. Stop it. Oh, you're nice when you're angry. Oh. Go out and 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 go you and go out and go out and go out and go <laughs> Don't just stand there, girl. Fetch me my fan and tell Hudson I am ready to receive. <laughs> 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 Oh, Henry yeah. And your coat. Oh, General, my dear Mrs. Graham, give us your arm. Oh, we'll have carriages for our past twelve, please. Yes, Oh, do that, you <laughs> Why did you fight for me? 
later transpired that the poor old dear had dropped her tarara down the pan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's already thrown her <laughs> This is the very last time we shall ask her, Mr. Bellamy. She's slumped. She and all of the passion rush. Oh, oh, no. Shall we have the pleasure of seeing you at the races next week? I'm afraid not. I'm going up to Scotland to shoot peasants. Oh, good enough. They go to Scotland to shoot guaf. He's right. Well, I'm going to Scotland to shoot peasants. It's Be the right. latest thing, don't you know? Oh, what oh, fun! Oh, 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 now, who oh, oh, Mr. Bellamy, Hello. tell Hudson we're clean out of gin. <laughs> 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 Emily, Emily, oh, no. Ring the bell. Oh, no. Ring the bell. will be requiring something more to drink. Who was that? Mr. James. Lieutenant James Rupert Bellamy of the lifeguards. Bleeding son and heir, that's all. Come on. Oh. Come on. It's locked it. Bloody locked. Oh, I'll be Gone for the police, I expect. Oh, what are we going to do? What are you doing back here? What are we going to do? Oh, shut up, Beanie. Oh, 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 shut I... up, Enid! Sarah, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Wait. We shall just have to wait, that's all. Something amusing you, sir? No, sir, I just coughed. Mrs. Cough. Hudson, if you please. After all, you rang for Hudson. Champagne, my lady? No. No, thank you, Hudson. Very good, my lady. Nothing like champagne to make a party go, we always say. I'm uh, not altogether sure of the names of all of your ladyship's guests. My guests? These are your guests. Ah. That is Lady Alderton. That's Mrs Graham. Behind me is Captain Orbelow, Mrs Graham's friend. And Alfred's Mr Bellamy. Lady Alderton. Oh, uh, no, thank you, I don't. Lady Alderton. Mrs. Graham. Oh, goodness me, just look at the time. We really must be going, Henry. Must you, madam? I was just thinking what a nice, select little party this is. Lucky that more people don't know about it. 
More people. If word got out about what's been... Uh... Oh. Now. Champagne. Captain Orbelow. Huh? Madam? I should greatly prefer to be offered champagne before my husband, Hudson. Begging your ladyship's pardon. How very remiss of me. I shall speak to you later. Very good, lady. Music. Lady Austin. Oh, no, thank you, sir. No, thank you, Hudson. No, thank you, Hudson. Yes, please, Hudson. It's a party. And we drink at parties, don't we? So glad to see you enjoying yourself. I shall tell you when I require more, Hudson. Mr. Bellamy won't say no. Mr. Bellamy enjoys his champagne. On top of gin. On top of everything. Everything is... What a charming party. And with plenty of bottles to go. Sick. Never mind, you're going to be Wait. sick here now. Get up. Not Come on, Rose. Of the red wine, but the are you talking about? Come, oh, finish. Rose, the take throat. them out the front door and up down the area. Come on, up here. Hurry up, oh, Rose. Gone, Not now, Alfred. Come on, Alfred. Alfred. Oh, Alfred, stay low. Rose, take Alfred. Oh, 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 o
The, pa the party's over, Hudson. Ah. Not Hudson anymore. Mr. Bellamy, Sarah. <laughs> your friends are going to feel a bit rough in the morning, aren't they? Make a nice story for your friends, won't it, sir? Uh, so have you all damn well right. Got a vanting all over the house. There. A perfect end to a perfect evening. I don't think. Yes, sir. Not you. Oh, someone let you down, sir. Yes, someone let me down. What a shame, sir. Damn it all, it was all arranged. I arranged it all. What happened then, sir? Go off of another chap, did she? That cad, Brennan. One of my best friends. <laughs> Last time I tell him anything, she was an absolute corker, Sarah. Are you an absolute corker? Would you have liked to have been taken to the Savoy, Sarah? To have danced all night? To have been given an expensive perfume? Hmm. What a delightful little waste. Would you have liked all that? Take those clothes off. All of them. And put your own clothes on. Is that what you were? <laughs> oh, God. Can I have my dress, please? Please. Please. Sorry. Uh, I really am sorry. I didn't know what I was doing. How can I make it up to you? You can't make it up. People like you can't make it up to people like me. I'm terribly sorry. I just didn't think. No, of course you didn't think. You don't have to think with us, do you? We don't feel. Sorry. Not thinking again. Here, put this on. It's not mine. But you can't sit there like that. It's what you wanted, isn't it? It's not mine! For God's sake, it doesn't matter. Take it. Keep it. She won't notice. Thank you very much. I'll wear it the next time the king calls on me. <laughs> Don't know what to say. No. Nothing I can do. No. You could say nothing about our gallivantings. Gallivanting? About what you found when you came in. Hmm. You see, we'd all lose our jobs, and you know what getting jobs is like. Bad, is it? It is bad. Then I won't say a word. Oh. Thank you, sir. Wasn't going to anyway. 
You weren't? No. I was just avenging myself on all of you for my rotten evening. Taking it out on you. Yes. Not been much of an evening all round, has it, Sarah? I don't suppose it has, really, sir. It was a lovely dress. You'd like a lovely dress? Yes. Then you shall have one. No. Why not? No. No favours, sir. No, thank you, sir. I'll get one my own way. Why won't you let me make it up to you? You have, now. If you'll pardon me, sir. Listen, why won't you let me buy you a dress? Not a dress, some clothes, some... A nice things. What am I going to do with nice things? But I will have them one day. Hmm. You're not happy with your lot? No. Are you? What do you want? Hmm. What should I want? I want for nothing. Then you're happy being a soldier. Begging your pardon, sir. I'm happy doing what is expected of me. Then you're happy. I don't see what any damn business it is of yours. Nobody ever asked what I wanted. No. They never do, do they? You get shoved into things. Just so long as they can fob you off with any old thing. That's right. It's not right. You shouldn't think so much. It's wrong for people like us to question things. People like us? Must remember what we've been taught. Everything has its place. It depends on what your place is. Yes. You know, sometimes I think we might have got it all wrong. A thinking officer is cannon fodder. I shouldn't have come home this evening, you know. That's what Hudson says. What? Huh? About thinking. Damn Hudson. To hell with the regiment. To hell with everything. Vive la République. Come on. My room. Get the place cleaned up, and it. Damn fool! Should have waited till you were sober. Just trying to get it cleaned You're up. You're bloody useless. Get to your bed, man. Just trying to. Go on, right get bed. out! Go and get a dustpan and brush and a mop. Clear up that mess. Mm 
No, it's got a spot on it. No. Picking up the pieces. You're balmy. You don't know what you're doing. Maybe. Here. I'm not staying here, not after last night. He huh. won't say anything. I couldn't care if he did. Well, you must be balmy. Maybe. But I won't be needing those, not where I'm going. Oh, where might that be? Where can you go? And why don't you want your shoes? My cousin. I'm going to stay with my cousin in Ilford. Oh, I didn't know you had a cousin in Ilford. Why should you? You don't own me. Do you want your shoes back or not, Rose? You'll be needing them in your next job. Rose, whatever happens, I'm not going to get a job like this again, ever. I don't care how hard I have to work, I'm not going to spend my whole ruddy life rotting away in an attic and wearing stupid second-hand clothes. Well, you don't have to go now, do you? I do, Rose. Well, how much money have you got, for instance, and where are you going to go? I've got 31 shillings exactly, and I am going to stay with my cousin in Ilford. I've told you! You don't know what it's like out there. This is the only bit of security you've ever known. You can't expect to waltz out of here with no money, no references. Not proper ones, anyway. And expect to get another situation just like that. We'll see. Oh, we'll see, all right. I mean, look at Katie. Used to go with guardsmen in the park. Caught the scarlet fever and out she went. She used to say to me, don't worry about me, Rose. I'll look after myself. I'll be all right. The baby died. And now she's on the streets looking after herself. I'm not expecting, Rose. Early days. Besides, there aren't many jobs outside for people like us. That's all you know. I could learn to type. I could work in an office. There's no future in that. There's no security in jobs like that. Rose, how can I make you understand? I'm not interested in jobs. I'm interested in something happening. Like this. Well, like what? This story in the magazine. I read it all by myself except for a couple of difficult words I couldn't manage. There's this girl. And she works in a tea shop. She's no one special. And every day, this man comes in and sits all by himself reading and he never says a word to her. But one day, she gets this parcel through the post and there's this beautiful necklace, no, bracelet, and an invitation to have tea with him. Well, they have the tea right there where she works. And the lady who owns the shop is very angry and she gives her the sack there and then. But it doesn't matter, you see, because he has already asked her to marry him. So they get married and they go away and they live in this beautiful house with lots of beautiful horses and great big dogs. And it all happened, Rose. It's in there. It didn't happen, Sarah. That's fiction, not fact. Don't you know the difference? Things like that don't happen. I was painted by a famous artist. That happened. That's not fiction. These magazines, these stories, they were invented for people like us. And the men inside them, you'd never meet men like that. The kind of man you'd meet, well, he'd only be after one thing. He wouldn't want to take care of you, love you properly. You've got some very odd ideas about men, Rose. Anyway. Well, you've got too much imagination. I haven't imagined the kind of life we're living here. Living everything through them like we was vegetables that had no feelings. Helping them put on their clothes, admiring their finery, wearing their stupid second-hand clothes. Well, I don't want a second-hand life, Rose. I want a life of my own. And I don't want a life like he had, either. Oh, what sort of life? My father. He won this for me at the fair. There's only two things I remember about my father. That day at the fair. 
and the days we used to go down to the hospital with him. What was the matter with him? Nothing was the matter with him, except we were starving. There was no work, so we starved. So all the men used to go down and hang around outside the hospital, waiting for the bits left over from the patient's food. I used to go with me dad sometimes. Sometimes all the kids did. Then this orderly had come out with a great big plate, all piled high with a great mess of scraps, all left over from those patients' meals. We'd all rush forward and dig about for the best bits. All them leftovers rose from what all them diseased people had been eating. And you want to take your chance against that? in the hope of meeting some nobleman in a tea shop. He won that for me at the shooting gallery. Five bullseyes. Then coming home on the tram, he turned to me right out of the blue and he said, there's a way round most things, darling, and there's a lot more to life than they let on. That's what my father said. And I'll believe him. Look, because Mr. James Bellamy made love to you, don't mean the doors of society are bloody well going to be flung open to you. I mean, who'd look at you to us? Look at yourself. James Bellamy thinks a lot of me. James Bellamy looked at me. Oh, enough to make a fool of you. He thinks a lot of me. Oh? Then why are you leaving? Because he suggested I should. Oh, I don't believe it. You can believe what you like. I just don't believe it. He's going to set me up in a little place of my own, Rose. I'm not really going to my cousin's. He's going to leave the army and he's going to become a writer. And then we're going to get married and for our honeymoon we're going to go to Bordighera. Then we're going to come back here and live and you can be my lady's maid, Rose, so you can still look after me. And you believe all that? No. But you do. I wouldn't look twice at him. He doesn't know what he wants. He don't know anything. Put that back in Lady Marjorie's wardrobe, will you? Did he make love to you? Fact or fiction? Did he make love to you? That's not the point, is it, Rose? I mean, that's got nothing to do with it. Can I have my magazine, please? What did you do that for, Rose? You know how much they meant to me. Can you piece them together again? I should think so. Look, don't go. Stay and have a cup of tea. No, I must. Well, I'll make it and then we can have a talk. No, I've got to go, Rose. Please stay, Sarah. See, I don't know what I'd do if you go. You're all I've got. You're all I've got anywhere. Rose! I've got to go, so you'll just have to get on. Out. Through the front door, the way I almost came in.
la République.